you know, you see it as the most glamorous, the biggest accomplishment. But through that, I received a lot of hate. I received a lot of bullying from my own community. And because of that, that absolutely destroyed me. I started, you know, paying attention to my weight, paying attention to all the insecurities about me, and I let that completely affect me. This year, I just had to change my mindset and really, you know, be proud of who I am and understand that I am who I am for a reason and I need to embrace every single quality about me. So once I let go of all the negativity, once I just decided to forget about what people were saying about me, I was able to thrive and that, you know, is, I feel like is the biggest thing when it comes to pageantry. You're new, Miss New Mexico USA 2022 is Suzanne Perez. Suzanne, congratulations. Fresh off your win for being the first Filipina yes. <laughs> Miss New Mexico Yay. USA. Thank you so much. Yeah. Trace your journey. Um, for us. So I was born in Oklahoma. I was born in a military family, but when I was two or three years old, my parents divorced. And so my mom and my brother and I moved here to California. So I was basically raised in California. I studied here my undergrad in speech language pathology, and I moved to New Mexico to do my master's program in speech language pathology. Were you always keen on joining pageants? With pageantry, I don't think I was at first. When I started competing at 16 years old, my mom pushed me. I was kind of forced into competing because you know how pageantry is in the Philippines. It's the number one sport that we do. So she pushed me because she loves pageantry. And when I started, I absolutely fell in love with it. I would watch Miss USA, Miss Universe, and just know that that's where I wanted to be. Right. But when I first started off, I was so shy. I had so much anxiety. I could not even speak to a camera. I could not speak to other people. So I truly transformed because of pageantry. Pageantry. The empowerment and the confidence it gave me was crazy, and now I eventually, you know, accomplished my dream of going to Miss USA as even the first Filipina. So that's crazy to me. Did you plan to take your masters in New Mexico so you can compete there, or could you have competed here in California? I could have competed in California. However, I did go to New Mexico because that was just where I was based at the moment, and. Looking into master's program, there was one school in New Mexico that I was really, really attracted to because of the, you know, the opportunities are provided for the students. And so I would always pray and pray and say, you know, if I am meant to compete in Miss New Mexico USA, if I am meant to be in New Mexico, then I'm going to, you know, get into the master's program. And sure enough, I got accepted. So it was just, you know, that moment where you know something was meant to be for right. you. It does feel like it's destiny for you. I truly feel like it was my destiny to you know go to Miss USA this year specifically I've been competing for seven or eight years and you know I didn't accomplish my dream until now mm -hmm. but when I was competing for Miss New Mexico USA I kind of planned it out in a certain way I would say I want to be called this number in the top 13 I want to be called this number in the top five I want this question to be my Q&A and throughout the entire process everything was happening the way I was you know praying for it the way right. I was manifesting for it so destiny truly is you know how I feel it has been this year for me. Right. Although you did send it out to the universe. I did. You were manifesting. Actually, you were declaring. Yes. You did talk about um, competing six times before mm -hmm. and not getting it. Mm -hmm. What kept you going? You know, I wouldn't lie. I have hit so many moments where I just wanted to give up. And I, you know, told the universe, you know, I guess this is just isn't meant for me because I'm not making it to where I want to be. I'm not getting the bigger picture of it. But I really, you know, focused on myself and really tried to pay attention to the things that I needed to improve on myself. So it was a lot of mental work, a lot of self-reflection. And when I finally competed again this year for the title of Miss New Mexico USA, I knew I was ready because I was ready physically, I was ready mentally, and I was in that state of mind where I was no longer comparing myself to other people. I right. was no longer letting the judgments <clears throat> and the perceptions of other people affect who I am. And I think that's why I was able to accomplish it this year versus any other year. This was the first year where I came in with a totally different mindset and that changed everything for me. Right. When I won Miss New Mexico USA, I was so happy, but overnight I immediately received a lot of hate comments again. again. A lot of, you know, YouTube comments, Instagram messages, just you know, trying to critique every single thing about me. But, 
you know, it hurt at first. And then when you really take a step back and look at it and just pray and just know that, you know, you're in your position for a specific reason. Where you are is where you're meant to be. I just keep telling myself that over and over and over again. And what also helps me is looking at past Suzanne. So looking at myself five years ago, knowing that Suzanne five years ago would be completely in awe of who I am now. So just, mm -hmm. you know, seeing that growth in myself is what helps me to ignore all the negativity, ignore all the hate and just, you know, pursue and thrive. Right. I do see the confidence. I do see the, um, the you're comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. What steps did you have to take to get there? Oh my gosh. When I tell you, it took me probably so many years to finally get to that point. But it just really is finding yourself a good support system where people are just constantly encouraging you and uplifting you and not trying to be condescending towards you. I feel like that's the most important thing. And just, you know, really embracing everything about you. You just, you know, have to reach that moment where you look at yourself in the mirror and just know that you're beautiful there are so many people who love you and you know despite what other people say you are you regardless and one thing i love about you too is you're pursuing education you're in your master's program for speech pathology tell mm -hmm. us about that yeah, so when I talk about my career in speech language pathology, I always tell people I genuinely feel like I'm working in my passion and not, you know, a job, a nine to five, a career, because I get to work in a field where I, you know, give a voice to people who feel voiceless. I get to empower, I get to advocate, and just knowing that I'm in a career where I help people in a way that's, you know, beneficial and successful for them, that's everything to me. So you have two roads in front of you right now, the pageant life, mm -hmm. and then this speech language pathology road which one will you take um <laughs> i feel like i could merge both of them together when i compete in pageantry i like to think of it as something bigger than the glitz and the glamour and the acting and the modeling and you know being famous on social media being famous for everybody to see i see it as a way to put yourself in a position of power where you can influence where you can empower where you can advocate and that's where i can bring in you know my advocacy of speech therapy for advocating for disability rights and disability awareness so you know both paths i feel can lead me to what i want to do right but meanwhile um, miss usa pageant is happening unbelievable to me that i you know made it there but i have been prepping non-stop every single day you know prepping physically prepping mentally and just doing a lot just to make sure that i bring the best self that i can bring to miss usa let's talk about the yes. prep for miss usa prepping physically what are your top three go-to's when you're preparing for this pageant physically growing up when i first started competing in pageantry i always thought that you know you had to starve yourself to look a certain way physically but you know what food is nourishment. So I would like to say that's the number one thing when it's prepping, you know, physically for the pageant. You need to nourish your body. You need to give yourself the protein, the nutrients to be able to do that. I love cardio. So I've been doing so much cardio to prep physically. And then, um, uh, you know, aside from the physical aspect of it, a lot of, you know, physical beauty breeds from confidence. So just, you know, telling myself affirmations every single day so I feel comfortable in my own skin and that can portray on stage. What about preparing mentally? Yeah, so with prepping mentally, I make sure that I have people around me who are constantly supporting me. There's a lot of pressure on me right now to, you know, to perform at Miss USA because I am the first Filipina to win my title and it's been a while since New Mexico has placed at Miss USA. So there is a lot of pressure on me to do so. So I, you know, turn to my friends and family to support me mentally with that. Um, also a lot of praying and reflecting. I have a journal that I write in every single day where I just, you know, write down everything that I'm grateful for once I wake up just so I have that mindset in my head that you know I'm grateful for where I'm at and it portrays when I'm you know on stage or when I'm out there doing events for Miss USA and the third thing I would say is just finding the time to focus on yourself so with all the craziness in the world when of prepping for Miss USA in order to be 100% mentally you need to take care of yourself so just having that downtime to you know be to yourself and just do whatever you want to do is very much needed I love that where do you see yourself like years from now like where do you <laughs> see yourself five years from now or maybe ten years from now yes yeah, so hopefully as you know the next Miss USA 2022 and Miss Universe 2022 that's the ultimate goal <laughs> but 
but aside from that, you know, just continuing the work that I'm doing for my advocacy, you know, standing up for people with disabilities and just, you know, centering my life around that and my, you know, ultimate goal aside from pageantry is to open up my own um, pediatric clinic for people that need speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. So that is the ultimate goal as well. Love that. What would be your message? for people out there, fans or haters alike. <laughs> yeah, so for everybody watching and for everybody supporting or not supporting, I just want to say maraming salama. Thank you so much for all your support, for encouraging me and just for uplifting me. It means absolutely everything to me to not only represent New Mexico, but represent a whole culture to be the first Filipina and just, you know, go against the standards of Americanized beauty. So thank you, thank you so much. And I can't wait for you guys all to see what I have coming at Miss USA.